the Chaos Quadrature Oscillator, like many Chaos circuits, actually has multiple outputs that are related to each other. So let's have fun looking and listening to this in multiple dimensions. You see on the screen this little white plot. Basically, that's taking the green signal, the X output, plotting it in the left and right dimension, and then the Y output, the blue signal, and plotting that as a height, up and down. You notice it's going back and forth around two basic centers on the left and right side there. And indeed, this type of circuit is often referred to as a double well type chaos circuit. There's two wells, or what's known technically as strange attractors, that's pulling in the signal to say, let's oscillate around these points. Now, if I was to drive it really hard with my input signal, it'll actually go around the output boundaries of this. And to make that more clear, let's go ahead and just turn off the green and blue for a second. So as we update, now we see we're just driving around the outside boundaries here. And as we start to pull in a little bit, now we're gonna start doing some crazier oscillations around those two wells, those two strange attractors. Well, what does this sound like? I happen to have these two parameters hooked up to the vowel and format of a 2HP vowel oscillator. So as these fluctuations move back and forth between X and Y, you can hear the tamper change. Same rules apply here. If I was to turn up the damping, which is turning down the feedback on one of the poles of the integrators in here, you get a calmer, more slowly changing circuit. It's more driven by our course frequency, the input drive. Until we get to the point where our external frequency is below the cutoff frequency or the rate of the chaos part of the circuit, then we get these crazy little squiggles. The higher we turn up the rate or cutoff, the faster those oscillations are. We can increase their depth by reducing damp, increasing the feedback. Or calm it down. Again, we can overdrive the circuit so it just follows the sine wave input. Or turn down the influence of that. And make it self oscillate by turning down damping. And now we have this very high rate of oscillation around its own poles, its own strange attractors. Reduce the feedback. Increase the smoothing. And play around with things like the second gain, the second feedback circuit. Allows more of the oscillations, the warbles from the resonance of this chaos circuit to get through. Or slam it out to its extremes. Rail to rail behavior. Then we'll use couple to change the nature of this second feedback circuit. If you find that turning coupling up dampens the signal down too much, just go ahead and increase the gain. Pushes it more to its rails, its extremes. Let's go ahead and turn the green and blue traces back on again so you see what this looks like. And maybe we'll even turn off the XY at this point. Take it off its rails. Reduce the oscillation rate. Smooth it out by increase the damp. Slow down the drive coming into it. Now you can really see the oscillations of the rate riding on top of the waveform that's coming into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and you can use different outputs to get different combinations of manipulations. It's kind of periodic there, but then breaks up the pattern every now and then. And you can always bring in a third dimension. For example, let's say we wanted to have a controlled pitch. So I'm going to take the Z output here, the magenta signal, run it through a little bit of an attenuator here, so we're not going through multiple octaves of pitch then drive vowels pitch with Z. A little more damping, a little faster rate of resonance or wobbling here. See what we got. Let's back off the damping to get a more pronounced amount of wobble. And maybe just a little bit slower. Now, you can take the drive from something other than this quad draw slip. For example, I can go ahead and plug in the Moog's LFO to drive these three dimensions. See the rate of the LED on the Moog and listen to the output. Increase the drive level to have it overwhelm what's going on. Cut it back to let the chaos circuit's own oscillations take over. And we can even switch to something like the square wave output. You get really bounced between two extremes now, driven by that square wave LFO. You can even drive this with other things such as gates, outputs of envelope generators, more complex LFO shapes, etc. But it gives you an idea now of what chaos oscillators do. They have a periodic behavior, but with additional randomness overlaid on top of that. Usually they have their own rate, determining what is the rate of their own random behavior. Damping or feedback to decide whether or not they closely follow the input. Or self-oscillate more strongly. And usually additional parameters to create different patterns, these oscillations. Gets you a way to have lots of modulation sources that are still related to each other. They take a while to master, but there's something you can have a lot of fun with.